Hello YouTube and today I am reviewing the Horror of Fangrock. Now this is an unexpected review for me and probably for you. Um, I've sort of got a review schedule that I'd like to talk about for a few uh, minutes. Um, before I start I'd like to welcome some new subscribers. Um, I'm not going to do a talk why you should you know stick around because you know it's pointless you know. Hopefully you enjoy the videos and yeah that's why you subscribe. Um, yeah, so the schedule um, after this review will be of the beginnings box set. What is a request? What I, you know, I feel obliged to um, do the reviews before you know my actual videos. What I've got planned because I think you guys should have as much of a say as I do when making these videos. Um, so yeah if you have any requests I'll try and slot them in between um, these reviews um, so after that will be the um, Inferno special edition yes I know people probably think I'm a fool for buying this but I had some spare birthday money and Christmas money so you know might as well get some DVDs to uh, help you guys to see so to break the second release um, um, well, the second John Pertwee story uh, to be released. Well, the last John Pertwee uh, story, what isn't going to become a special edition, I don't think. So, to break this up, we've got the Visitations um, special edition. Now, I have to do my top five Tom Baker and Peter Davison and Colin Baker stories and my Series 7 review. Um, they should be up soon. Um, yeah, all I'm going to say for this is it's a brilliant story, one of my favourites uh, for Peter Davison. And I got this yesterday, I watched two episodes of this, and it is The Mind of Evil, um, with the hand-coloured episode one, and then I think the rest is done with chromo dots, I think. Yeah, it's a really good story, it's quite a scary story, not as in, ah, monster scary, as in, you know, being killed by your sort of phobia like rats, spiders, whatever, what have you, you know, drowning, fire. So yeah, it's quite a creepy story for that, you know, it's quite a uh, psychological um, story. After that will be a three part video on the key to time. So part one will probably be the Ribros Operation, Pirate Planet, then part two, Stones of Blood, Androids of Tara, Power of Kroll, oh sorry, and um, then part three. Um, Power of Control and the Armageddon Factor, and then basically the conclusion about it. Um, that's all I've got planned um, um, so far, anyway. So, on to the re uh, review. Um, well, I shall do the cover like I normally do with any DVD review. Um, so, we've got the standard Region 2 uh, BBC DVD uh, Doctor Who Horror of Fang Rock. Now, this seems like a really simple cover, but I find it really effective. Um, we've just got a picture of Tom Baker there. And we've got the landscape, what this story is set on. We've got some rocks, um, a lighthouse, what is the sort of main item of the story. Um, well, main sort of set of the story. And then we've got the Rutan, or its spaceship, whatever you want to know. Because I don't really want to spoil the story for you. I'm just here to give my opinion on it um, so we've got the Tom Baker banner there what we've all seen now the spine is really nice a nice sort of bluish colour with some stars a really nice effect really like it and we've got a special feature banner so you know what to expect on this DVD bit of um, information about the story what the basic plot line is um, the story is by Terence Dix who is a fantastic writer and was the script editor for Doctor Who for quite some time. So this story was first broadcast on BBC One between the 3rd of September to the 24th of September 1977. Now this was the first story to be um, produced by Graham Williams uh, replacing uh, Philip Hinchcliffe. Now we've got some nice pictures um, from the story and if we look inside, sorry about that We've, oh dear, this is going well, but um, yeah, sorry about that. We've got the disc there, um, yeah, just for seeing Tom Baker, and then we've just got a close up shot of Tom Baker. So, if you look at the booklet, um, 
So on the back of the booklet we've basically got the chapter points, so if you're going to stop the DVD um, you can pick up any um, sort of point in the story, well, these sort of points. got some pictures there. Um, inside we've got commentary as ever. And then we have the special features which is Terence Sticks Fact or Fiction that looks at Terence Sticks' um, sort of role with Doctor Who, you know, his life with Who. Then we've got Paddy Russell, a life in television that looks at Paddy Russell, who I think was the director. Um, she's an actress and um, just talks about her life in television, really. Uh, so there we've got the Doctor Who Antiques Roadshow thing, it's Doctor Who meets Antiques Roadshow. If you're really uh, interested in the Doctor Who merchandise, uh, then this is a uh, probably a worthwhile documentary, well, sort of feature to watch really, photo gallery and the production subtitles. Okay, so the story um, was basically an idea by Robert Holmes. Now, Robert Holmes is one of the best classic series Doctor Who writer, um, writers. Um, and um, he'd thought he'll ask um, Terence Sticks to um, write a Doctor Who story for him because he uh, wrote um, some stories for um, John Pertwee when uh, Terence Sticks was a script editor. Now, Terence Sticks said back in 1973, I think it was, um, could you write a medieval story to Robert Holmes? And Robert Holmes was like, no, no, I, I can't do a story on medieval England. Um, so um, Robert Holmes went to Terence Sticks and said, oh, um, could you um, write me a story on a lighthouse? And Terence Sticks, what? Well, how can I do a lighthouse? Um, so basically, Robert Holmes got his um, own back on Terence Sticks, which is quite nice, really to know that he got his own back. Um, now onto the story. Now the main sort of setting as I've said is a lighthouse and um, I think it's really effective. It starts off the same way as the Time Warrior. I mean you've got people in the sort of main location. So we had um, Iron Gron and his like, chaps in the castle and then we've got um, the people from the lighthouse. Um, um, just relaxing I suppose that's not really relaxing and one of the people sees a shooting um, well they refer it as like a shooting star or falling star um, so it starts off the same way like the Time Warrior um, yeah I like how Terence Sticks uses the weather um, because of the idea of an alien slash supernatural presence causing like the temperature um, to drop um, what is should be familiar to you guys who have seen the daemons because they sort of used a heat barrier but this the temperature drops and fog magically well not really magically but it just suddenly appears as soon as the object what is a rutan um, falls now this is a typical sort of horror story you know, you've got people being killed, this, um, the setting is isolated, people can't get out, people are dying. So it is quite a tense story, it's got anticlimaxes and climaxes. Now the main villain in this story is the enemy of the Sontarans, what people, um, well what the Sontarans keep going on about, um, the War of the Rutans. Now, you would expect the Rutans to be this fabulous you know creature to fight the Sontarans but because the production budget was sort of you know low you know it's a fairly low budget story the Rutan you know didn't end up as well as you know Terence Sticks intended it to be so this is what the actual Rutan looked like and if you can see it a green bit of jelly and then it was later used in an adventure game with Matt Smith, the gunpowder plot, which is a really good game. Um, yeah, so let's do my final thoughts on the story. Um, yeah, so are you going to get a good Doctor Who story? Um, yes. Um, 
you probably are. Um, well, it's written by Terence Dix. You you can expect um, good writing. Um, yeah, he he has you know produced some of the great um, Doctor Who stories. Um, the setting is brilliant. Um, it's very atmospheric. You know, isolation again works a treat. Um, but I do prefer Terence Dix's other Tom Baker story, The State of Decay. Yeah, so I would recommend this story. Um, it's a brilliant Tom Baker story. Uh, there's, you know, typical TARDIS humour. You know, TARDIS was meant to go humour, but TARDIS was meant to go somewhere. But it ends up in a different place. It ends up in a different place. Yeah, that sort of kind of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching this review. My next uh, story review, will, well, DVD review, will be of the Beginnings box set. And big review since filming this review, which I filmed earlier in the week, and now I'm filming the other half to it. Um, my some of my series seven figures have come so it's all exciting stuff so the review of them should be up um in a couple of days so thank you for watching and goodbye